In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you how to use the add-on called Tidler Pro and add graphic images or shapes. This is for users of PowerDirector 365 or PowerDirector Ultimate. Those packages include a copy of Tidler Pro. So I have my video on this track and we're going to add a title. I go to the title room by clicking on the T or pressing the F7 function key. And then I'm going to go from all content to the last subcategory called New Blue. Then I'll take my Tidler Pro icon and drag it down to a video track. We'll overlay our video with this title. Now I'm going to click on it and that will get me into my Tidler Pro editor. Let's change a couple of things before we get into the video. I'm going to double click and call this Spring Tree Special. And then we'll move the title down. We'll do some more things with graphics related to the title in a moment. What I'd like to do now is add a graphic image inside of Tidler Pro. In order to do that, you go to the upper left corner and click on the word File to get the File menu. And then from the drop-down, click on Import Image. This will open up your file system where you can drag a file that you'd like into your project. We'll click on that now. I have a graphic image called Greenhouse. I'm going to click on that and click on the Open button and that will load it into my project. Now you notice when you're looking at the timeline below the preview screen it simply calls it Shape. I wish we could rename it but in this case we can't. But we do have a nice graphic image called Shape. I'll click on that to highlight it. I can resize it and reposition it any way I like. I can do other things with it but for now we'll just leave it here in this quadrant of the screen. So that's how easy it is to add a graphic image. You can add as many as you want. Again, the stacking order is that the ones that are on the top are the ones that are higher than the elements below them. So right now it's on my top track. Let's say I want to take the words now and add a shape behind them. I'm going to click on Add Shape. Now in this case I need to make sure I don't have any of these other tracks highlighted or it will attempt to add a shape in that particular track. So that's a gotcha. So now that neither of these are highlighted, I'm going to click on Add Shape. I'll take a rectangle and now I have a rectangle. I can take and drag it and I'm going to highlight the words with the rectangle. Now I can either change the opacity of this so I can see the words or I can simply take it and drag it down to the bottom. And now it happens to be below the words, but they're all white, so I still have an issue. So I will take the opacity and drag it back. And then I can change the size by clicking on any of the boundaries. And now I've got the width about where I want it. Now we'll get the height about where I want it. Now there's some nice things you can do with this. It's not limited only to certain kinds of colors. I'm going to click on the Style button with that shape selected. And now this, you notice on the face, I can do a single color, I can do a gradient color, or I can do a texture. Let's do a gradient color. And it looks like we have two colors of white. We have two circles, upper left corner and lower right corner. I usually like my gradients to be more horizontal. So we'll move both of these balls with the mouse. And then we'll take the bottom one and we'll click on it. That will give me the color that will radiate from that spot. Let's go to the green spectrum. We'll take a darker green here. Click on OK. And then I can change the color for the top part. It's a, it's a white now. Let's go to a slightly an off-white. Off-white yellowish maybe. I can find something that's not too colorful. Let's try that one. Click on OK. Now that doesn't look too bad. So now I've edited that, put a gradient behind my lettering. You can also do other things if you want to with the letters. I'm going to click on the middle timeline, my spring tree special, and let's do some change with that. Now it's white letters, but what if I want to change the color? I'll go to Solid Color, and I'll click on my eyedropper, pick color, and I'll pick the same color we have in our graphic. And now I have 
the special. I'm going to go to two dimensional. Let's do a shadow. And it looks like we have sort of a black, black shadow. We have a layer depth, an offset. Uh, that looks pretty good. I think I think I'll increase the layer depth just a little bit. Okay, if that's not too dark, we'll try that for now. With when I'm finished, all I have to do is click on the X and that will close the program. And now we see this on the screen. One thing I forgot to do was to take the uh, opacity and dial it back up again. So as simple as can be, all I need to do is double click on it. That will return me to Tyler Pro. And now in light of the darkness of the letters, I think I'll make another change. Let's take the opacity of my shape. And we'll make that 100%. That brightens it up a little bit. Go back to my letters. I'm going to look at the style again. And I'm going to turn the blur back. There, that's better. And now all I have to do is click on X again. And now I have my spring tree special from Sam's Greenhouse. So you can either modify your Tyler Pro title using external graphics like we did up here, or you can use it also by using the shapes. You have an oval or ellipsis, or you can pick from a rectangle or a square as well.